Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I'd like to talk a bit about abrupt versus gradual collapse events and lessons that can be learned from experiences of survivors of the Venezuelan economic and political crisis. Let's get to it. So there are two general types of societal collapse events, abrupt and gradual. In the abrupt category, you have things like nuclear war, cyber attack, EMP, geological events like volcanic or tectonic activity, solar flare induced power outages, meteorological events, and even so-called technological malfunctions as supposedly was the cause of the recent Argentinian power outage, which left nearly 50 million people in the dark, albeit for a short period of time. This just goes to show how vulnerable modern power distribution systems are when one single linchpin can bring entire countries to their knees. More gradual collapse scenarios include the three E's, economic, ecological, and epidemic. All of these include a more gradual and drawn out reduction in the quality of life and the delivery of critical services. In the long term, they would entail a massive loss of life. Many economists, ecologists, and epidemiologists all view these collapse scenarios as being inevitable, meaning it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Now the purpose of today's video is to talk about surviving long term. I'm not just talking about six months, I'm talking about two, three, four, even five years into one of these catastrophic societal collapse events. Several events happening around the world right now might be signaling that we are in store for one of these long term drawn out collapse scenarios as opposed to an abrupt one. For instance, Midwestern farmers in the United States are projecting much lower crop yields in light of the massive flooding. Around the world, record-breaking heat waves in India, Lithuania, Moscow, Japan, Australia have put further stress on the agricultural output of these regions. The crisis that happened in Venezuela and that is continuing to unfold there may be a good representation of what the rest of the world can expect in the next few years. A more drawn out collapse scenario, which is wrought with more socio-political and economic challenges, is probably the most likely. The movie I think which best depicts the future is some hybrid between Children of Men and the movie Elysium. In this world, a very privileged few enjoy the benefits of technology, while the rest of the world has to fight over crumbs. This is very similar to the events that unfolded in Venezuela. So I'd like to read you an excerpt from an article which was written by somebody who survived the Venezuelan economic crisis. What really stood out for me here is that a lot of preppers seem to be fixated on this idea of abrupt collapse. Things are going to collapse and then society is going to rebuild itself. But what if it wasn't like that? What if it was just a drawn out, long-winded, never-ending collapse situation where things became increasingly more difficult. How do you prepare for such a situation? So I'm going to be paraphrasing a lot and jumping around in the article just for the sake of saving time, but if you want to read this article, I will post a link in the description below. My comfort bubble was destroyed. My work of an entire life was thrown out the window. My family insurance coverage policy is gone with the wind. Although no medications were to be had anyways, and doctors were running away to Argentina and Colombia, so it wasn't like it was useful. The few preps I had for four to five months are history now. Of course, they work pretty well, and we stretch them out a little bit. But once the system collapsed, there is nothing else that we can do but close the place and bug out to some other place where we can at least buy food. What happened was something entirely different than what we had prepared for. Within our means, we prepared more or less adequately, but what really happened was something entirely different that we had not prepared for. We prepared for some of the consequences of turmoil, unrest, riots, crime. We were able to hunker down for a while to defend ourselves silently and seriously without having to leave our haven. The scarcity problems started back around 2013, 2014. Those years were the last time I remember that we could buy large amounts of wheat flour, corn flour, pasta, powdered milk, packaged milk, rice, or other staple products. An economic this long seemed like something which was entirely out of the question. And I want to pause here for a second and emphasize this point, because I think this is where a lot of people stop when it comes to thinking about the long-term survivability of a collapse scenario like this. Chances are society is going to still be functioning in some loose sort of way. And a collapse of this sort anyways will be a more gradual deterioration in which you may have to stretch your preps years. 
It was entirely unpredictable. I would have expected a pandemic or a coup d'etat long before this hungry, zombie-like scenario. We knew something disturbing was going to happen sooner or later. We could feel it in the air. But nothing like this. We never thought it would be impossible to find a battery, or engine oil, or gasoline. Geez, this was an oil-producing country. And he goes on to talk about a lot of the socio-political turmoil and the coercion and the tyranny which was happening at this point in time. He goes on to say, if you pay with a debit card, the price will be double than if you were to pay in cash. This is not surprising. The rate of circulating cash to the non-circulating was deeply distorted. You transfer them 1 million BSF to their bank accounts and they'll give you 500 or $600 cash. And that's barely enough for two dozen eggs and some cheese. So you see here that they're on the cusp of totally regressing into a trade and barter based economy. So then he goes on to talk about what he might have done differently if he could prepare again today. A five year antibiotic supply. I've made a video on how to get antibiotics before the grid goes down. Go check that video out. I'll post a link in the description. Diarrhea stopping meds, needles and tubing, surgical gloves, respirator masks, a solar power array with a small battery pack just for lighting. That's when the apex would come in handy, I suppose. Uh, large buried diesel custom made aluminum tank with a proper size generator. So he talks about how fencing off his garage would have helped or just general uh, home fortifications. A sun protected small herb garden in the roof and a small workshop in the back of the house with spices and medicinal plants. Perhaps a chicken coop with a couple of hens. Even growing our own sugar cane, a couple of corn rows. So basically what he's saying, the only way to survive a gradual collapse scenario like this, because most people are not going to have the means to store years and years worth of food and supplies. So the only viable way to do that then is to become what I call a macro prepper, aka a homesteader. He goes on to talking about why bugging out was not a viable solution. Our laws don't approve homeschooling. Driving one hour from the country cottage to school every day is out of the question because car parts and consumables is nearly impossible and too expensive. Crime is getting nasty. A cottage with crops and cattle is an easy target for hungry people that were too lazy and ignorant to prepare themselves when they could. Getting a tool like a shotgun for defense would just bring more problems. Thugs see this as an attraction too big to resist. Since weapons and ammo are scarce, they are a real treasure. They know where you are and they are organized and have the proper context to be able to put you in a very difficult position. It may have been much worse to take down someone trying to mess with you in your home as they never steal alone. The castle laws won't apply unless the deceased has been a real pain in the backside and has been a dangerous criminal their entire life. And if that's the case, chances are a lot of his friends are similar. Now obviously this is something which is going to be unique to the country he lives in and the laws are going to vary from country to country. But the point I want to emphasize here is that this is a far more tricky situation because society is still functioning within this collapse scenario, but it's only functioning at like 10%. So in a lot of ways, you can see how that would even be more challenging than a full blown collapse scenario where you wouldn't have to worry about cherry pick laws being enforced by excessive rule of law. The castle laws won't apply unless the deceased has been a real pain in the axide and a dangerous criminal throughout his life. And if that's the case, chances are a lot of his friends are similar. Or even worse, Leo's law enforcement officers will persecute the cottage owner because they are a threat to the government. They will empty the house of whatever is inside as possible products of crime and the owner will be unable to prove the contrary from the inside of a jail. I have known several people who have had to pay monthly to a guerrilla militia the products that they offer to sell at a loss. So I've talked about this in previous videos where extortion will definitely be a factor in a grid down situation. It's a very similar situation to Negan in The Walking Dead. If you ever watched that show, his whole social model revolved around extortion and offering everybody's community some measure of protection so long as he can tax them. Having kids to take care of and provide for, the loan option is really not an option. If the bug out location is not far away enough or well hidden enough, sooner or later someone will discover it. The best option is to band together with some other families, each in their cottage and build a communications network reliable enough and with good backup in case someone tries to attack. So I'm going to post a link to the full article in the description. I would encourage you to go and check it out. So let me know what you think about the distinction between abrupt versus gradual scenarios. What are the challenges will be faced in a drawn out collapse scenario of this sort? Do you think something like this could happen 
in the Western world. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the video. Those likes, subscriptions, and shares really help out the channel a lot. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Up. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.